There are two things we all have in common. We all have to eat and we're all gonna die. But if we may pass on a little piece of advice, just try not to die before you've eaten in Italy. Italian food is nothing short of legendary. Ask any traveler about their favorite cuisines in Europe, and I would be shocked if Italy doesn't at least crack the top three for almost everyone. There's just something very special about the attention to detail, the quality of the ingredients, and the consistency of the recipes when it comes to Italian dishes. But here's one thing we didn't realize until we actually got to Italy. It's not all pizza and pasta. Italian food is actually intensely regional. The type of food you're likely to enjoy varies greatly depending on where in Italy you actually are. It can even differ from city to city within any given region. In this video, we're gonna share our discoveries about the five different regions of Italy that we visited, so you'll know what to expect if you're planning your own Italian food extravaganza. So let's start with a little overview. Despite the difference in actual cuisine from region to region, most Italian meals are structured the same way. The format of the meal is organized into four stages, antipasti, primi piatti, secondi piatti, and dolci. Now unless you're at a fancy place or it's a special occasion, you're not always going to have all four of those stages, but it is in general very unlikely that you'll have those stages out of order. So you're never going to have a secondi first and then have your antipasti. It's just the idea is that it's structured in this way so that it's enjoyed at the best part and the best time of the meal. The closest translation in English for the four stages would be appetizer, first course, second course, and dessert. The antipasti or the appetizer is always going to be something very light, a soup or a salad or maybe some bruschetta, but it's never going to be anything all that heavy and definitely not any mozzarella sticks. The primi or the first course is generally the course that involves pasta. The secondi or the second course is usually something a little more heavier, so this is if you're having a steak or lamb or some kind of seafood, that would be the secondi. And then the dolce, the dessert, pretty self-explanatory. That's when the cannoli or the tiramisu comes in. Now another quick thing I want to mention just in this general overview is that if you're a breakfast person, I'm not going to go as far as saying Italy's not for you, but it's just something to be aware of. There's not as much of a breakfast culture in Italy, just meaning that if you're eating something in the morning, it's probably something very light. And far more than any breakfast food item, Italians in the morning are a lot more concerned about their coffee than they are about whatever they're gonna have at their first meal. In general, it's usually a two meal culture where you have lunch and then the heaviest meal is at night. And somewhat similar to Spain, that meal can be as late as 9 to 10 p.m. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into the highlights of the five different regions that we visited in Italy. There are 20 regions of Italy in total, and each offers its unique blend of culture, cuisine, and geography. But in a more general sense, Italy is often divided into four parts. The north, the center, the south, and the islands. It's kind of cool that the cuisine depends on where you are in the region, and a lot of times it's because the ingredients are so fresh and so locally sourced that it depends on where you are, what you're getting in your actual meal. So if you're on one of the islands, or if you're in Venice, or you're on the coast, you're a lot more likely to enjoy some seafood with your meal, but the more hearty, you know, the steaks, the risotto, things like that, that's more towards the center or even the north towards the Dolomite mountain range in the north of Italy. But so much of the diversity in the dishes by region comes from the fact that Italians love to cook with locally sourced products. Region number one that we were fortunate enough to explore actually twice is the Lombardi region. And if you know me, I am a Green Bay Packers fan. I'm from Wisconsin. So it was kind of cool to be in the Lombardi region of Italy, even though it actually is spelled differently than Vince Lombardi. Lombardy is located in the north of the country near the Alps. So it's closest to Switzerland and Austria on the northern border. And it's also where the metropolitan area of Milano is. Milan is one of our favorite cities in Italy, and it is definitely a food capital. But interestingly enough, because it's the Lombardy region, and we'll talk about the foods that you're most likely to enjoy there, it's not as much pizza. And people are always very surprised about that. Now, it's not like you can't find a pizza, but this is definitely a region of Italy where pizza is not prominent in the cuisine. There is a lot of beef that is featured in this cuisine, and also risotto. So again, like there is pasta that you can find. It's not like you can't find these things, but you're almost more likely to find a risotto based dish rather than a pasta dish. It's also a cuisine that features a lot of cheese and cheese is just king when it comes to Italian cooking. No matter where you are in Italy, you're gonna find some great, great cheese, but it's generally not mozzarella when it comes to Lombardy. That would be more in the Campania region. Gorgonzola cheese is one of the cheeses that comes from this region, and also the very specific Parmesan, the Parmigiano Reggiano, I think it's, that's how it's pronounced, that comes from the Lombardy region as well. 
The number one dish that I recommend trying if you're in Lombardy is the risotto alla milanese. It's the Milan style risotto and it is absolutely delicious. One of my favorite things, not just in Lombardy but all of Italy, it is so so good and again something you might not think of when you think of Italian cuisine, but it's a risotto based dish obviously and it has saffron in it. So it has a really nice yellow color to it and it just looks absolutely appetizing. Saffron risotto, something you really wouldn't think about in Italy, but it's so big in Milan. If you're in Milan or even if you're near it, trying the risotto alla milanese is definitely something you don't wanna miss out on. There's so much flavor to the dish. A lot of times it includes either chicken or beef stock, which gives it a lot of flavor. It's usually cooked with white wine as well. And there is some of that Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese in there too, for sure. The cherry on top, if you will, of the risotto alla milanese, it usually comes with bone marrow. And I've never been much of a bone marrow person, but when I was in Milan, I was on a bone marrow kick. I just could not get enough of it. A lot of times it comes from veal when it comes to the, this actual risotto dish. And it's just so, so flavorful. It's unbelievable how much flavor is packed into that little morsel. And it's just right on top of the yellow saffron infused risotto. It's so, so good. And I just can't wait to try it again. Region number two of Italy that we explored and enjoyed so much is the region of Veneto. I think that's how you pronounce it. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. But this is the region where Venice is, the famous city on top of stilts right in the middle of a marsh. And this is something that's really cool because when you think of Italy, it was actually founded as a country in the 1940s. And I think for some reason, I, I've definitely been victim of this too, but when we think of Italy because of all the ancient cultures that existed in what is now modern day Italy, we think of Italy as a very old society. But Italy as we know it today has only existed for about a century, not even a century. And the reason that I bring this up is because the region of Veneto and Venice itself was a lot more influenced, obviously, by the Venetian society, the Venetian Empire. You're not gonna have a lot of carryover from, let's say, the Romans or any of the other very, very ancient societies within Italy itself. It really doesn't have a lot of carryover when it comes to Venice and the type of food that is usually served in Venice. It's actually a lot more similar to what you see as far as cuisine in Croatia and other parts that were part of the Venetian society that really ruled by the water. Venetian cuisine is actually one of the only Italian cuisines that features something kind of similar to tapas in Spain. And it is called chiquetti. It's just one of those words that's really fun to say in an Italian accent. So. I apologize about that. But cicchetti is generally, it could be like a piece of bread with some cheese and meats on top of it. It could be some sort of little fish that you have on a stick. Uh, there's fried meatballs that they have that's a very popular thing in Venice. But this is again, something that you really don't think about when you imagine Italian cuisine. I feel like I'm gonna say that a million times in this video. But when you come to Italy and you're expecting to have the mozzarella and the pizza and the pasta, and then you're met with something that's so opposite from what you were expecting with the cicchetti. It's so cool. I don't know if I can choose a specific dish to recommend from the Veneto region and from Venice, but if I can make a recommendation for a restaurant, I would definitely go with Alcovo. This is a restaurant that has been there for a very long time. We first heard about it on Anthony Bourdain's show, and we were so excited when we got the opportunity to go there. It was the most memorable meal we had while we were in Venice, and I can't recommend it enough. Everything is locally sourced from the Veneto region, and they always come up with new dishes too. So there's a lot of inventive spirit and ingenuity, and a lot of collaboration too. So it's cool to see, you know, based on the time of year and based on you know what's fresh at that time that's how they decide which dishes to make but it, as a meal itself we had all of the goods we had the antipasti we had the primi secondi definitely some amazing dolci so that is an experience if you're in venice that i could not recommend enough moving on to region number three which is a very popular region for american tourists that would be tuscany now the highlight of Tuscan cuisine is actually probably the wine. There are so many vineyards in this region and just going through on the train, it is so cool to look out and just see all of the beautiful vineyards. It's a lot like the north of California, like Napa Valley. It's just this cradle of wine. Everyone said, says Tuscan wines are amazing. But here's the thing that I will admit right away, I am not really a wine person and I am far from a wine expert. When everyone talks about the notes and the hints and the 
airing it out, letting it breathe. I don't even know what people are talking about. So I'm not gonna get too much into the wine, but just know that if you are a wine person and you're going to Tuscany, you're going to the right place. Tuscany is very famous for the pasta known as pappardelle. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, feel free to correct me. And usually it's served with a wild boar sauce or something like that. That's at least what we saw most on the menus. But the pappardelle is the pasta that's the very thin noodle and they're just, they're, they're wide, but they're very thin. And it's just a very hearty thing to eat. It's so, so good. I guess there are quite a lot of wild boars roaming around the Tuscany region. We didn't run into any, but that's why that is in, included in that dish. And a lot of times the sauces that are on top of the pastas, on top of the pappardelle, are a nuttier flavor and just a little bit more earthy than something you think about like a ragu from Bologna. It's just a little bit different than that. It's not as sweet and maybe just a little bit more of a nuttier flavor. Now a city in Tuscany that is very popular with the tourists, you've probably heard it. It goes by the name of Florence. They're very famous for their steaks. The Bischetta alla Fiorentina. That would be my recommendation for the dish to try in Tuscany. It is a T-bone steak, and I guess it comes from this ancient breed of cow that's been in the Tuscany region for a very long time. It has to be this specific cow, and it has to be a T-bone steak in order to be considered a Florentine steak. And they're so good, oh my god, they're just absolutely amazing. The way that they're presented, it always just looks so appetizing. Wouldn't really think of steak for Italy, would you? That there's no pasta involved or no pizza involved in that one. But as I'm on the topic of pizza, this is a region where you will find some pizzas. A lot of these wineries, they like to have wood fire ovens where they cook the pizzas to pair with the wine. So even though you're not quite in Naples yet, you'll be seeing probably a little more of the pizza category when it comes to Tuscany. But do not, do not, do not miss out on the steak. Okay, region number four, one of the most famous regions of them all, all roads lead to Lazio. And that's because Lazio is where Rome is located. So now that we've made it to Lazio, we have officially made it to pasta heaven. This is a region that takes their pasta very seriously and this is a place where if you're visiting, it's probably a lot more what you imagine Italian cuisine before actually getting to Italy. They are so big into their pastas. And going to Rome, having both pasta alla carbonara and cacio e pepe, those are the two pasta dishes that I just can't recommend enough. I'm sure you've heard of them and I'm sure you've had them outside of Italy. These aren't exactly things that people have never heard of before. Cacio e pepe, it literally translates to cheese and pepper. This is a pasta that is made with a very specific type of pecorino cheese and just loaded, loaded with black pepper. There is so much flavor and it's just so good. A lot of people call it the Italian mac and cheese and if Italians heard that, I'm guessing that they would be a little offended by that and they would probably just scoff and roll their eyes. But I can see where people are coming from. There's just a lot of cheese. There's a lot of cheese involved in this pasta. It definitely does not use elbow macaroni as the noodle though. It's usually either bucatini or just a very, very thick cut of spaghetti. The noodles are always very thick when it comes to the cacio e pepe, and that's because it can kind of trap in all of that cheese and just all of the goop, I don't know what else you call it, all of the toppings on top of the pasta. When you're eating it and you're eating those bigger noodles, you just get more of that, and that is where the flavor comes from. So, so good. Now when it comes to carbonara, I already mentioned it a little bit in our Rome video because I just, I was amazed at how much better it was than any other carbonara I've ever had in my life. I've always thought of carbonara as just, you know, a nice creamy pasta, it's it's okay, it's got the bacon in it or whatever, it's, it's a decent pasta, but then you get to Rome and you try it, it's a completely different experience. First of all, it's not just any kind of bacon that they use, it is called guanciale. It has to be guanciale in order to be real spaghetti alla carbonara. So you got these thick pieces of guanciale in there and then the fat that's rendered from that along with the egg yolks that are used when creating the pasta it just creates this creamy creamy texture and there's no actual cream in the pasta that creamy consistency completely comes from those two ingredients it's so simple and it's just amazing I absolutely love it I remember seeing on Stanley Tucci's show that there's this 
theory out there that it came from when there were American soldiers based in Italy during World War II, that they had a lot of bacon and eggs with them. And that idea of bacon and eggs uh, put into a pasta dish, that's where carbonara came from originally. Now before anyone goes flying off the handle at me, I have no idea if that's true, but I'm just curious if there's any validity to that. So I just wanted to basically put that question out there in the universe if anyone can answer that for me. But either way, the Lazio region, pasta heaven, best pasta I think you'll have in Italy, cacio e pepe, spaghetti alla carbonara, do not miss out. Region number five of Italy that we visited, the last one on this list, and probably the best one when it comes to cuisine. That's a little bit of a controversial statement because there's great food all over Italy. But in my humble opinion, from what I tried there, and I was just absolutely blown away by everything, the Campania region. This is probably the cradle of what we think of as Italian food in America. And a lot of it's kind of been bastardized and it's just not the same thing. I mean, when you go to Pizza Hut or you go to Olive Garden or any of those chains, I mean, that's just so far from what a lot of these original dishes were. But when you come to the Campania region, this is where mozzarella de bufala comes from, the buffalo milk mozzarella. It's also where the Amalfi Coast is, so all of the lemon infused pastas that come with that. And above all, what you have probably been waiting for me to mention since this video began, Naples in the Campania region is the home of pizza. Now, Neapolitan style pizza, which is considered the original form of pizza, it's not always a slam dunk with tourists. And I think it's because the specific style, it, it's different than you might think of with a lot of other pizzas. I think that comes from the way that the dough is tossed and then it's cooked very, very quickly in a very hot oven. But a lot of times the middle of the pizza, it can get almost a little soggy, I wanna say. And then obviously the outer crust, that's, that becomes very thick. And um, by the time you get there, you've eaten all of the toppings and all of the sauce. So what's good to do with that crust sometimes is if you have some olive oil, uh, maybe some balsamic vinegar, which is also another thing that's very famous from the Campania region. You put a, bit of, a little bit of that on a plate and dip your crusts in there. Mm, absolutely amazing and a good use of the crust in my opinion. The Neapolitan style pizza though, as classic as it gets, specifically the margarita pizza, which uses the holy trinity and just happens to be the three colors of the Italian flag green, white, and red. The green is the basil leaves that are on top of it. The white comes from the mozzarella, which has to be buffalo mozzarella, or else it's just not a proper margarita pizza. And then of course the delicious, rich, just incredible tomato sauce that is the base of the pizza. Always comes from the San Marzano tomatoes, uh, very specific, and there's so many things that go into that that I don't really understand. I guess the volcanic ash in the ground <laughs> give it a specific sweetness. I don't know how that, you know, translates to being sweet, but whatever it is, it works. It is just the best, best tomato sauce in the world. The undeniable main event of the Campania region is of course going to be the Neapolitan style pizza, the birthplace of pizza, and then the buffalo mozzarella that kind of goes hand in hand with the pizza. But another dish that completely caught me off guard when we were in the Amalfi Coast was the spaghetti alla vangole. I'm pretty sure that just directly translates to spaghetti with clams. Because there is so much coastline in this region and so much access to the sea, there is a, a pretty heavy use of mollusks, whether that's mussels or clams. You will see that in a lot of Campanian dishes, but the king of them all for sure, in my opinion, is the spaghetti alla vangole. It's this white wine sauce that they use on top as well. It just has such an amazing flavor. And it may sound like a very simple dish, in a lot of ways it is, but there's just something about the clams that are on top of this pasta and how it interacts with the flavors of the pasta. It is so, so good. And I honestly wish I had a big bowl of spaghetti alla vangole in front of me right now as we speak. In addition to all of those glorious things, just having fresh fish near the Amalfi Coast and in the Campania region, it is so, so good. And that really kind of goes hand in hand with any other region of Italy that is by the water. The preparation of fish in Italy is so good in the way that they do it. We had a sea bass that was coated in sea salt when we were in the Amalfi Coast and it was just some of the softest, most tender fish I've ever tried. Squeezing lemon on top of that and just enjoying it by itself like that. It's so good, I, oh, amazing. I'm making myself hungry with this video. So that's a basic overview of the five different regions of Italy that we visited and the cuisines that they're famous for. 
This video could obviously be a lot longer. There's a lot of other dishes that are very famous from all five of those regions, and of course the other 15 regions that we didn't even mention. Italy is just a food capital of Europe. It's one of the best cuisines in the world. And it's just amazing to me how diverse it is depending on where you are in the country. And it really makes me want to go back and try some more. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if there's anything that we missed and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next video.